podcast episode, Dual Hydraulic Failures on the A320. Welcome to the A320 Mentor Channel, the channel where we transform complex aircraft systems into practical, operational knowledge for every Airbus A320 pilot, from new cadets to experienced commanders. In today's podcast, we're diving into a topic that, while rare, is critical for flight safety and simulator preparation, dual hydraulic failures on the A320. Let's explore the procedures, systems involved, handling recommendations, and how to manage this high workload scenario effectively. Buckle up, this is one of those. Need to know. Situations. Part 1. Understanding the impact. First, let's clarify an important point. Single hydraulic failures on the A320 usually have minimal impact on aircraft handling. You may lose some redundancy and your autoland capability might be downgraded to CAT-3 single. That's manageable. But when you suffer a dual hydraulic failure, you enter a completely different world, one that affects autopilot availability, flight control law, aircraft configuration for landing, and significantly increases crew workload. Depending on which hydraulic systems are lost, green plus blue, green plus yellow, or blue plus yellow, the remaining flight controls, gear extension, braking, and even yaw damping may be compromised. Part 2. General Guidelines and Initial Response Here's what you need to remember if you encounter a dual hydraulic failure. Autopilot will be unavailable, but you may still have flight directors and auto thrust, depending on the scenario. Alternate law will apply for most combinations, and once the gear is down, you may revert to direct law. Manual flying is required. Be prepared to handle the aircraft smoothly with degraded controls. This is an emergency. The ECOM will display land ASAP in red, and you should declare Mayday to ATC. Landing must be executed as soon as feasible, but only after completing the ECOM and QRH actions. Part 3 ECOM, QRH, and Status Page Discipline This is a complex failure, meaning the ECOM will take time. Task sharing between PF and PM becomes crucial. The PF should fly the aircraft and manage radio while PM runs ECOM and QRH. Once ECOM is complete, refer to the QRH summary for guidance on degraded systems and approach planning. A clear understanding of the status page is essential. Don't rush. Pay particular attention to Gravity gear extension procedures Flap, slat configurations and the required approach speed, the approach. Part 4. Remaining systems and operational effects. Now let's examine what you're left with, depending on which systems fail. Scenario 1. Green plus blue failure. Alternate law, no autopilot. Right elevator only. Two spoilers per wing. Normal braking lost, alternate braking only. Nose wheel steering and anti-skid, available. Only reverser two available. Expect a hand-flown approach and gravity gear extension. Scenario two, green plus yellow failure. Alternate law, no autopilot. No stabilizer, no yaw damper. One spoiler per wing. Slat slow only. Braking via yellow accumulator. Nose wheel steering inoperative. No reversers. Expect higher pitch during approach. Scenario 3. Blue plus yellow failure. Normal law preserved. This is the least severe combo. Autopilot lost, but most control surfaces remain. Alternate braking with anti-skid still available. Reverser 1 only available. Nose wheel steering inoperative. Each scenario requires specific briefings. In particular, tail strike awareness is crucial when you lose pitch trimming or have elevator-only pitch control. Part 5. Approach and Landing Considerations Your approach will be Fully manual Flown with selected speeds on the FCU Early stabilized, due to degraded handling Gear down via gravity extension Landing with limited or no reversers Braking will vary Review QRH to know whether you have alternate, accumulator pressure only, or normal braking Be aware, once gear is extended flight control law may drop to direct law. Make sure to stabilize at V-approach speed before gear down so that the elevator auto-trim reference is set correctly. 
Ignore the ecom message. Use man pitch trim, unless specifically directed otherwise. On landing, monitor pitch for tail strike risks. Use available reversers, manual braking, and know your stop margin. Nose wheel steering may be lost. Anticipate long rollout and use rudder if necessary. Go around is not advised due to landing gear retraction being inoperative. If a go around is absolutely necessary, fly the aircraft carefully in the degraded configuration. Closing thoughts A dual hydraulic failure isn't just a technical scenario, it's a human factors challenge. You'll be flying manually in degraded law, with high workload and minimal system support. Here's what makes the difference. Brief well. Share tasks. Stay calm. Use the QRH summary. And execute the approach with discipline. This is the type of situation that shows the value of simulator training and the importance of handling complex scenarios with teamwork and resilience. Thank you for joining this episode of the A320 Mentor Channel. If you found this breakdown useful, be sure to. Join the channel for just 99 cents per month to access exclusive tutorials and simulator masterclasses. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And most importantly, stay sharp, stay safe, and keep learning. Until next time, fly smart, train hard, and never stop mentoring.